Let's move to the second innate immunity called internal defense. As previously discussed, internal defense also called as the second lines of defense. So it will be triggered when the pathogen enter the body. There are four types of internal defenses. The first one is the phagocytic cells, followed with the antimicrobial protein, natural killer cells, and the last one is the inflammatory response. The first one is the phagocytic cell. This type of defense, also known as the cellular counterattack. This is because the phagocytic cells were also called a phagocytes that detect the pathogens and attack them. The phagocyte will kill the pathogen by engulfing them through the process called phagocytosis. What is phagocytosis? It is a process that involves phagocytes, which have receptors that are able to recognize certain structures such as polysaccharide on the bacterial cell wall. This phagocyte will engulf the bacteria and trap them in the vacuole. The vacuole then fuses with the lysosome. Lysosome will produce the nitric oxide which is the free radicals and other gases that are able to poison the pathogen. The lysozyme and other enzymes in the lysosomes will degrade the bacteria cell wall. Let's illustrate the phagocytosis process. At first, the pseudopodia, which is the temporary protrusion from the membrane of the phagocytic cell, will surround the pathogen. The pathogen then are engulfed by endocytosis process. The vacuole then forms. This vacuole will fuse to the lysosome. Lysosome that contain lysozyme and several other enzymes will destroy the pathogen. The debris from the pathogen then release to the environment. There are four types of cells that can be classifies the phagocytic cells. The first one is the macrophage, the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and the dendritic cells. Both dendritic cells and eosinophils play limited roles in phagocytosis, while neutrophils are able to engulf and destroy the pathogen. Let's take a look at the macrophage. Macrophage is a large, the regular shapes of phagocytes, which also known as the big eaters. Macrophages develop from the monocytes in the blood. It falls through the body tissues by engulfing the damaged cells and the foreign matter. Macrophages reside permanently in the organ and tissue. As an example, the lungs air sac contain large number of macrophages to destroy the foreign matter from air. Let's continue with the dendritic cells. Dendritic cells roam in tissues that are in contact with the environment. It is able to migrate to the lean node after it counted the pathogen. In the lean node, dendritic cells will interact with the immune cell to stimulate the adaptive immunity. It acts as the antigen presenting cells, or ABC, or helper T cells, and activated cytotoxic T cells. How about neutrophils? Neutrophils are the most abundant leukocyte and circulate in the blood. It attracted to the injured site by signal from the infected tissues. The phagocytous bacteria before inactivated. The last one is eosinophils. Eosinophils can be found in the mucous membrane that line the digestive, the respiratory, and urinary tract. It defends against the multicellular invader like parasites. As an example, the worms by secreting the destructive enzymes. Other than phagocytic cell, the antimicrobial protein, which consists of peptides and protein, also able to kill, prevent, or inhibit the growth of reproductions of pathogen.
The two examples of the antimicrobial protein discussed is the interference and the complement system. So how interference work? Interference is the types of protein that inhibit the viral reproduction. Interference is created by the virus infected body cells. It stimulates an infected cell to produce its own antiviral protein to block the viral reproduction. Interference also helps to control viral infection such as cold and influenza by limiting the cell to cell spread of the virus. While interfering the virus activity, interference also activate macrophage to enhance their phagocytosis. Let's illustrate the interference mechanism. At first, the viral nucleic acid invaded the cell. The first cell could be considered as the infected cell. The interferon genes then turn on to produce the interferon molecules. This interference molecule will be transferred to the host cell too, which is the neighboring cell, so then it able to stimulate the antiviral protein from the host cell too. So the antiviral protein now function to block, block the viral reproduction. Let's move to the complement system. Complement system is a group of approximately 30 proteins in the blood plasma. It circulates in an inactive form and are activated by substances on the surface of the pathogens. The activation will trigger the generation of membrane at the complex. The complex will be inserted into the plasma membrane of the pathogen and form a little hole or pore. This diagram illustrates the functions of a complement protein. It's a complement protein that embedded in the plasma membrane of the invading microbe. As you can see, it forming the little hole or pore as pore that allows the fluid to enter the cell. The extracellular fluid then enter the pathogen through the pore that causing the pathogen to swell and burst. Another complement protein coat the surface of the pathogen to enhance phagocytosis of the pathogen by the macrophage. The third one is the natural killer cell or NK cells. NK cell is a large granular lymphocyte that originate from bone marrow. It destroys virus-infected body cells and tumor cells by both innate and antibody-mediated process. Natural killer cell release perforin, which is a type of protein that form pores on the membrane of the target cells. It also releases another protein called granzymes that enter the cell and activate the protein in the cell, which induce apoptosis. This diagram illustrates on how natural killer cell function. So this purple color cell is the natural killer cell that tightly binds to the target cell. Target cell can be any cell like tumor cell or viral infected cell. So you can see in the diagram that uh, once NK cell bind to the target cell, the vesicle that containing porphyrin and the granzyme molecule will be released by exocytosis. Porphyrin then polymerize the plasma membrane of the target cell and forming the pores. So the granzyme will pass through the pores and activate the caspase enzyme that induces apoptosis in the target cell. The apoptotic cell is broken down into vesicle and the macrophage then phagocytose this vesicle.